Hi everyone. Well, I have a special guest here with me on Parliament Hill, Rabbi Shear. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Mr. Shear. <laughs> yes. Well, no relation. Uh, I understand you spell your. I spell my name with a C and two E's, and your. I'm a C, but one E. One E. Okay, great. Well, I, I'd love to ask you a few questions. Yeah, please. Uh, my father's father uh, was Jewish, so there's a branch of my family that, uh, that, that that were Jewish, and there's still some elements of the culture and some of the phrases that I remember when I was growing up. Uh, and Passover is coming. And I wanted to, to know if you could tell me a little bit about it. In other words, I'd like you to explain why this night is unlike every other night. Very, very well <laughs> asked, Andrew. Great question. So um, why is this night different than all other nights? Um, so come Friday night this year, which is the first night of Passover, the Jews around the world will sit down to what's called a Seder, mm -hmm. which is a dinner. But it's a diff dinner that's different than all other nights. We eat different things. We talk about um, things that we usually don't talk about or don't necessarily usually talk about. We sing specific songs. It's a lovely evening f surrounded by family and friends. But all of those differences actually prompt the youngsters at the Seder to ask the traditional four questions, which all revolve around, why is this night different than all other nights? And which then opens the floor for rich discussion and an opportunity to share ideas that will hopefully keep us inspired for the year ahead. Okay, and I understand it, it dates back to the time of the captivity in, in Egypt, uh, the time of Moses, and Jewish families were instructed to mark their homes so that they were literally passed over and were spared the, the, uh, the, 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 the actions that were, uh, that, that they were being done to the Egyptians in order to allow them to be separate. Exactly, and hence the name of the holiday, Passover. Pesach in Hebrew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned a special meal. Is it delicious? Is it a big <laughs> sumptuous banquet? Or what so are yes, thinking? eventually, after many hours of waiting, you do get to the big sumptuous banquet, but there are certainly foods beforehand that are some delicious, but some anything but delicious, such as the bitter herbs to remind us that we were slaves in Egypt that bitter time. Those are probably the most terrible food I eat the entire year. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and afterwards, you, you mentioned special prayers uh, and then more of a, a celebration of the fact that... that uh, celebrating our freedom of... and, um, you know, in internalizing that message of Passover, which are many messages of Passover, but one specifically all about that change from slavery to freedom. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now, of course, I'm so thankful that we get to live in a country where we're able to celebrate the differences in our religion. We're each able to, to practice our faith, to live out our religion, to, to celebrate, to worship, uh, and uh, living in a country that, that welcomes and celebrates the contributions of the Jewish community going back over 150 years. That's something that makes me proud as a Canadian. Oh, it, it makes me so proud as a Canadian as well, and I think that that's actually one of the most important messages of Passover. In fact, this whole concept of being slaves and being freed is almost a call to us. It resonates in so much of what we do as the Jewish people, and uh, it almost seems as if there's a call to our collective historic memory. Remember, you were slaves. There was mm -hmm. a time that you were subjugated. You did not have a voice. You did not have dignity. You did not have freedom or respect. So now remember, so essential to who you are must be providing that dignity to others, giving others a voice, showing others that respect, and providing freedom to everyone around the world. Well, I'm certainly proud that Canada has welcomed and celebrated the contribution of the Jewish community. Unfortunately, there are lots of Jewish communities around the world that don't have that freedom, that don't have that protection. And I think it's important that we all work together to bring that freedom, to speak out against that injustice, the prejudice that still exists in many parts of the world. Uh, and uh, I know that's something that we're very committed to, uh, to doing, to working with people of all faiths, of all political parties all around the world to ensure that uh, everyone all over the world has the same freedoms and rights that we have here in Canada. Oh yeah, the message of Passover. But before we end, I thought it would be appropriate to teach you the Passover salutations, the traditional Passover salutations. I love that. So right. I can wish everyone a happy Passover <laughs> exactly. in, in, in Hebrew. <laughs> exactly, okay. in Hebrew. So the first word is Chag, Chag. which means holiday. Okay. Okay. Chag. Kasher, Kasher, which means kosher. Okay. Sameach, which means happy. Sameach. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Chag, Chag, Kasher, Kasher, Sameach. Chag, Kasher, Sameach. Thank you very, very much. Thank there you very you much, go. Rabbi. Absolutely. Thank you.